A man wakes you up in the middle of the night, tells you you're very handsome and to come with him. When shit like that happens to me, I just go like, yes. That sounds like you were his easiest human trafficking victim. Dude, exactly, because I was in the right headspace. That's kind of what happened. Call from... William. To accept... Hello? Hi. What's your name? William. Have we ever spoken before, William? We have not. Well... Where are you at right now? Where am I at right now? I'm 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 under the ocean. Um, I'm in the clouds. I'm inside of your brain. I'm talking to you on the telephone. Can, Aren't you in like Arizona? Or something? Why? Hold on. Why would you say that I'm in Arizona? Because aren't you like on tour or something? Um, I I, I I'm 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 on tour on and off this whole year. But right now I am um in. And in dis- I am I am in a place sitting in a chair talking to you. That's where I consider myself to be. Where are Hello, you? Welcome home. Thanks. I'm man. in New York City, baby. Okay, how's that going? Brooklyn. So you're in New York City. Is there anything in particular that you called in to talk about today? Yeah, I wanted to tell you a weird story about me. Because you're kind of a kindred spirit, a wanderer, a traveler, and uh, I have a weird story about like one. I've been traveling since I was like 19 or something, just basically like wandering around the world, like moving places and doing weird shit. And I want to tell you about like the weirdest, one of the weirdest things that's happened to me in all the adventures. Okay. Uh, Yeah. What? Tell me the story. So like, I just like um, broke up with this girl I was dating for 10 years. So I just like was flipping out like uh totally like one of those moments where you just like your identity is totally malleable and so i like i flipped out went to india and my second night there like like i just had spent one full day there and was kind of like damn india kind of sucks or something (laughs) you know because you always bitch when you first get somewhere before you start having fun and um okay. tell me i want to know I, so you you were when you were there the first day what was it that that you felt sucked about india nothing sucked it's just you travel and, like kind of to escape at times and i find that it's kind of annoying because you realize oh i'm i'm still here in india true. <laughs> it's true. Everything that's true. Everything you're escaping from tends to follow you in a sense. Yeah, like life always, you know, like there's this right. I think the Buddha says uh people will say, you know, go here, or go go there, but I tell you the truth, the whole world is burning. I think that's real talk, bro. <laughs> but Are you okay? Hold on. Are you hold on. Are you okay? What is up with you? Oh, I'm just nervous, dude. This is, I just called like 17 times. I'm like, oh my God. I'm just hyped up. <laughs> no, don't be nervous. I don't know. You sound, I don't know. I, I just, I couldn't tell if you were doing a bit or something. Cause you know, no, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take you at full, I'm taking you at full, at full, at uh, face value here. And I would, I would you be should. so I'm upset with you if at the very end of it. Okay. Okay. It's, if you're, if look, I, I appreciate that. If you're naturally just a weird guy, I'm, I'm, look, yeah. I'm a weird guy yeah. too. I invite that. I just, I don't know if you're doing okay. a bit, but right. okay. So but, you realize so, that India didn't suck. Your life just sucked. Yeah. I mean, sort of, but I mean, life is cool too, but, uh, so I, I went to sleep in this hostel and then this, this, uh, dude comes in these like two Muslim dudes and they start like praying super loud and stuff. It's it, which is something that's happened uh, in in my travels. Like Muslim guys just like pray openly in the hostel and it's like slightly annoying, but um, that's interesting because I always thought of prayer. Isn't prayer prayer is kind of a quiet activity. How are they praying loud? It should be, but it's like kind of flex. Like it's kind of like flexing. Like they'll do it like right in front of everybody. But whatever, you know, to each their own. And, and it eventually, um, you know, the story leads to me becoming Muslim. So I, so this guy, like, he shined a light in my face and was just like, you were very handsome. And then he was like, I want you to come to work with me tomorrow. And I was like, uh, you know, I'm just trying to be open to new experiences. So I'm like, okay, yeah, like, sure. 
I'll like yeah, go to work yeah. with you tomorrow, whatever that means. Okay, and I like that. I like that. I wake up the next day. I go with him, and we're in Mumbai. And it turns out he's like this wholesaler, and he like owns a cosmetics mall in this other town called Surat. And uh, and so I go. I'm walking around with him in Mumbai through these like all these areas like you know I would never normally get to go to. You know that like you don't. You don't see any tourist, and like it's getting really like sketchy, like going through like really like poor parts of town, and just and more than that, just like India is fucking crazy, man. Like you gotta go to India; it's like amazing. Not really, but, um, yeah. So, but, so this uh, man, just to catch us up, so this you are sleeping in your hostel, and a man wakes you up by telling you that you're very man. handsome, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and to yeah. come to work he with him. Had a crush. He kind of had a crush on me, <laughs> but <laughs> this sound this uh, 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 you that sounds like you were like his easiest human trafficking victim. Well, dude, exactly because I was in the right headspace too. So you'll see how this. I it basically <laughs> that's kind of what happened. <laughs> but <laughs> so uh, I'm going around with him to these wholesalers, and I'm like his like token white guy. Like he's like, look, like I have an American with me. And I'm like, at the time, I'm like working in construction for like years, and and he's like, okay, like tell him you're in the construction business. Like, he's like, he's like introducing me to people as if I'm like Donald Trump or something. Right, right, right. Yeah, and I'm like, meanwhile, you own the company. Meanwhile, I make like yeah, fifteen dollars an hour. But uh, I'm like, yeah, sure, man. Like, I'll I'll help you flex and. And it's working. They're all like very impressed. Like, wow, where'd you find this white guy? And at the time, I had like Guy Fieri, like frosted tips. So I looked even more freakish. Like, when you're in mm-hmm. India, like everyone stares at you already, just mm-hmm. if you're like a foreigner. But I looked like an extra weird foreigner. So people are just like, what the fuck is that? Like, everywhere I go. And I was out mm-hmm. there for a while. So it was like a constant thing. But, um, so yeah so then he starts like taking me to mosque and and we get into one and and it's there's something really sweet about it because he kind of has to like argue to like even get me past the past the people to even let me in they're like no that guy's not coming into the mosque and he's like i'm i'm taking him in like get out the way like (laughs) this is my brother it was it was adorable and and it was really like it came from a really good hearted place I feel and okay. um and so <laughs> but you know to go in the mosque and to pray you know it's like called to prayer time and so I had to say the prayer to like become Muslim so I said the, this prayer wait wait, wait hold I on go in. hold on you said you had to say the prayer to become Mu- so yeah, wait, so you're like you so th- like, so let me get this straight. So within the span of like te- how uh, within the span of a like day, four, this is four hours. Yeah, four within hours a four hour day, span, you're <laughs> sleeping in a hostel. A man wakes you up by telling you he thinks no, no, you're no. handsome, I slept the night. and you I go slept with him to night. a mosque and convert to Islam on the spot. Yeah, because it's like, well, it's it'd be awkward to back out now. I'm already we already like fought to get me in here, so it's like. Yeah, fuck it. I'll say the prayer, and it's like, what can I lose? You know, like I'm down. I'm I'm really down to just go deep when I travel okay. and just like fucking let okay. it consume me. You know, that's the whole point. Uh, you me. know, I don't. By the way, I don't <laughs> think that's a bad idea at all. I, well, you look, you yeah. only have one life. You might as well try out all the religions. Exactly, man. And and and, dude, Islam is beautiful. Like, okay, so I was, so you you got you this 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 guy. Brings you into his mosque. He has to argue with the guys there to get you in, and then you say a prayer. Yeah. And what happens after that? So, so then um, I go in and I, you know, I do the whole prayer, like where with all, you know, that you see with all the dudes like lined up on the ground, like in rows. And I'm praying in these. They're like ancient mosques, like, and when you're in there praying, it feels like it's like two thousand years ago or something, like. And I was having, like, feeling these really, like, intense, profound feelings, you know? Like, I was like, oh, shit, this is, like, pretty real. And I'm not, like, a big fan of dogma or anything, but it was, like, 
I was like, whoa, like maybe this is this is actually it, you know? And uh, but more than anything, I'm just trying to have an experience. But it's kind of blowing my mind. And you know, throughout the day, by the end of the day, he's taken me to like eight <laughs> mosques, you know. And we've been praying, you know. I'm already starting to pray, like you know, you know, ten times a day or whatever. I don't even remember the amount, but I was praying a lot, you know. In between, like in between all these calls he had to make to like buy makeup or whatever, and um, and so then we're sitting, we we get to like one of the sketchiest neighborhoods we've got to so far. I've, I've already prayed like you know a bunch of times. I'm super Muslim already, and he's introducing me to everybody as like this is my new Muslim friend, and. Um, and then I get, he takes me into this room with the sketchiest dudes, like smoking clove cigarettes. And, um, like, uh, he's like, yeah, this is my new Muslim friend. He's American. He's an American businessman. And then he asked me in front of these guys, he's like, will you change your name to Muhammad? <laughs> and I'm like. And I was just being spineless at this point. It's just like, so, oh, no, you, yeah. you're, you're, you're in, you're deep. Yeah, if he yeah. asks you to change your name, you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, I was like, okay, yeah, fine. I'll, I'm Muhammad. <laughs> you know, just to get him off my fucking back. Because if I say no, I'm like, it was kind of scary, you know. Like I felt really pressured. Let me ask you a question. Step. Let me ask you a question. Okay, so at yeah. this point where this, ma- okay, again. A man wakes you up in the middle of the night, tells you you're very handsome and to come with him. You are, are, are heartbroken. You have nothing else going on in your life. So you are walking down any path that presents itself to you. Exactly, man. And, yeah. and so then, and then I, he takes you on a tour of 10 different mosques. You pray at all of them. And then is this, is yeah. this, all, in, is this all in one day? Yeah, this is day one. <laughs> and then he, and then the man asks you to change your name. Like in that, mo- like, did you? Where did you think this was all going in your head? Like, don't tell me where I it did. I want to get to where it actually went. I, but where did you didn't give a? You said you didn't care. No, I'm just like I'm. When shit like that happens to me, man, I just go like, yes. Like I thank God. Like anytime some wild, like chaotic shit happens around me, like I went to jail like last month. And it sucked, like, randomly. And it sucked, but it was, like, I, like, thank God for that shit. Like, when it when it doesn't actually hurt me, I'm just, like, because that's what I want out of life, man. Those, like, real-ass, insane experiences. Like, sure, I want yeah. that till the day I die, you know, and that's what I'm looking for. And uh, so I'm just, like, yeah, yeah, sure. And then he's, like, and then he asked me, I want you, I'm, I have this, like, meeting I do yearly. Uh, his this cosmetics mall is called NR Group, and he says I want you to come um, to come to my hometown tomorrow, and and you're gonna stay with me at my family house for a week, and I want you to give an inspirational speech to 200 people. And he said I'm still in front of these sketchy ass scary dudes after he, I changed my name to Muhammad, and I was like okay yeah sure, <laughs> and so I'm, I locked that in. We get out, and I start, like, questioning, like, holy shit, this is, like, so stu- Like, what am I doing? Like, I, I'm just on fucking vacation. Now I'm, like, roped into this thing. My name's Muhammad, and I'm Muslim. Like, I realize it's insane. And, um, and I get kind of mad, and I'm like, dude, listen, like, I'm not Muslim. My name's Mo- not Muhammad, and I'm not going to, like, go give this fucking inspirational speech. You find- You stood up to him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then he was like, okay, okay. And, you know, this, this place, Surat, it's called the Diamond City. And the merchants from there are, like, known for being great salesmen. So this man was a very convincing man. <laughs> and this stout, like, ugly guy who's always, like, drooling, like, this shit that he has in his mouth, like, tobacco shit he has in his lip. But he's, like, a powerful dude, you know. And... um and he's like, okay, you're not Muslim, your name's not Muhammad, but please, like, come back with me in my hometown and give this inspirational speech. And I gave in. I, I fucking gave in, man. And um, so uh, 
I go with him to his hometown. I, he has this little, he has this like teenage assistant with him too that's hanging out with us all day. And I, uh, I go with him uh, out to Sirat and we get there. Um, I keep like praying every day in the mosque and like, and in between, like you don't only pray in the mosque, you put, pray at like, there's places at gas stations. There's like a spot everywhere to pray. You pray in your house, but basically you just pray a whole bunch every day. And when you're, and let me ask you, when you're praying every single day, okay, uh, you're just, you started practicing Muslim uh, a, a day ago. And you're praying mm-hmm. at gas stations. You're praying everywhere you get the chance to pray. What do you actually do? Are you have you like internally submitted yourself to 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 Islam at this point? Like, what are you actually no, thinking not when at you're all. praying? Because the thing is, man, like the I'm just like I I was raised Christian. I I still like Christianity. I've done, went to Buddhist retreats. I've taken ayahuasca. Like I, I love like all religions. I love Hin- Hinduism, love Ramdas. I love all that shit. I love Islam. Like I don't really make distinctions. Like to me, wisdom is, is wisdom, and and God is God. And like dogma really bothers me. <laughs> like religiosity bothers me, and that part really bothered me. But there's some type of sacred transmission. In that whole ceremony, like there's this cleaning ceremony before you pray, and it's all like symbolic. And I was just having to watch. It. There's so many like moves you have to know. So every time I pray, people will be looking at me like <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. And you kind of have to like look around and like, okay, I wash my feet now, and then I go in here and I do this move and then that that move, and you do this weird stuff where you like pray for your memory and like for your eyes <laughs> and stuff. And it w- it was just deep, and um, and so and then I'm like hanging out with this guy's family, like I'm in his home now, and it turns out he's like the richest fucking dude in this town. Like we're rolling around in like Benzes, and it's funny, like you drive a Benz in India and you just fucking like scrape it up against motorcycles, you just bash that shit up, like. <laughs> And, but what? this guy can, fucking... can I ask? Can I ask? <laughs> what is this? So this guy? Okay, so what's the name of his hometown again? <laughs> Surat. S- Surat? Surat, yeah. Surat, and he you met him in Mumbai. Yeah, yeah. So how far away how far away was is are those two places? I think it was like a like a five hour train ride or something. Wow. So So if this what the hell is this guy if he's the richest guy in this town, what the hell is he doing at a random tourist hostel in Mumbai? Cause it cause Cause it's fucking India, man. I don't know. It's like what what's like rich in India in Surat is not the same as what's rich in uh, America. You know. Okay. Okay. Can see, I want to hear the rest kind of, of this. What are you? What? Uh, well, uh, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. You talk. It's kind of a baller thing. It seemed like to me, even to be in like a hostel, it's kind of like the rich kids of India are more likely to be found there than you know poor people. Yeah, this is where the Westerners stay and stuff. That is kind of okay. baller <laughs> in India, I feel like. I could be wrong. I mean, Indian people might be like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But this is just my impression. Okay, so you're in uh, – uh, I'm just going to keep pronouncing the city wrong, but you know what I'm talking about. So you're in this guy's hometown. Um, yeah, I'm staying and... with his like wife and kids. He's given me my own room. And like, he's like made me a part of his family. Like I'm praying, there's like structure in my life. Like this is me coming out of one of the most flipped out, like manic, depressed parts of my life. And I've just like stopped talking to my mom, my two best friends, broke up with a girlfriend of 10 years, lost her family. Like I was alone in the world at this time. And, and there's a philosophy among uh muslim people of like of like welcoming people and and giving to people and they and indian people are like this too and they just like gave me everything and welcomed me completely and it was like you know i'm playing with his little nephews and it's like i'm like these people love me like (laughs) you know like i have a place here 
and um and i'm it's just like it's all kind of like makes a lot of sense and um and so uh basically he's like he even he's like taking me to these like muslim scholars and shit and i'm like talking to them about what like confuses me about the quran and stuff and i'm going deep and then i guess uh the the conclusion of all this was i um uh, they had that that big meeting with 200 people and i gave the fucking inspirational speech <laughs> i wrote it <laughs> that morning <laughs> i wrote it that morning in bed <laughs> <laughs> and then went to this place with all these people that worked at his yeah. mall, his cosmetic mall, and I wrote some fucking dumbass speech about like hard work and like <laughs> the value of that even small jobs have value. I think I kind of like bombed, like because <laughs> they didn't even need to hear hear me tell them about hard work. Like they were already crying, like because they're so like passionate about their job. Like they didn't need me telling them this shit. <laughs> But, you know, I tried. I sent it. it was this weird fucking Guy Fieri. I had, like, my hair greased back. I went and gave me a suit. I got, like, a fucking haircut and shave. Uh, so you basically came in here like they thought you, – you, like, so the guy was he, – he was saying this man works in the construction business, making everyone think that you are, like – like you're Donald yeah, Trump. Yeah. You own some kind of giant, yeah, um, he's you know, construction he's like, enterprise. He's yeah, he's using me to his leverage because not only it's such a big deal to people that he's getting this white American dude to be a Muslim. Like, he's scoring hard. Like, that's the biggest flex imaginable. <laughs> do you remember? Can I hear? Do you have any lines from this speech? Do you have it? Do you still have it? Man, they fucking recorded it, but they got they ended up getting too mad at me <laughs> that they didn't. Uh, give it to me i do have a wait a minute hold on how do they okay so did did this take a turn do the people get mad at you after this it doesn't really take a turn like super dramatically but ultimately you know this was the end of like my seventh day or something and by now they've offered me like they're like listen you're a part of our family now and and we think that you belong here. We think you're people are telling me we think you're going to be a great Muslim, like an influential Muslim. And I was yeah. like, <laughs> you know, like they're like showing me these Westerners that like became Muslim. And they're like, this is a path for you. And you're we're, you're going to work at our cosmetics mall. You're going to be an international businessman. You're going to travel like around Europe and India and Africa buying from wholesalers. You're going to be like one of the top guys at our company. You're going to live in my house and you're going to be a part of my family. And we're going to get you, you're going to have up, we're going to get you a wife. And you can have up to three wives. <laughs> you know, so all this shit was sounded pretty damn nice. Wait, he you. told you that he was going to give you three wives? <laughs> up to three. <laughs> it's like, if the one isn't good, then you can get another. And if two isn't good enough, you can get like a third or something. Yeah. <laughs> so... So I was like, this was all sounding pretty, I mean, fuck, dude. You know, I'm like 24 years old at this time. Like, that sounds like a pretty damn good life, man. Like, That's what I was going to ask you. I was going to, like, when they're, okay, they're, they're, they, <laughs> at that point, I mean, you, I assume you didn't have a job and you'd broken up with your girlfriend. At that point, were you just like, were you considering it? Were you like, yeah, and that, fuck and that it, I might just stay here. And it, yeah, and it freaked me out. Because I was just like, am I thinking? Like, I felt this whole time like I had my head on my shoulders. Like, this wasn't even my first rodeo. I've been doing, my entire life has been weird as fuck. So, like, I, this is like something that I'm accustomed to. This level of weirdness is not new to me. So, but like, but I was like, am I like being brainwashed or something? Like, am I okay? Like, is this is this okay? And what was, it was freaky because I was like, I think I might actually fucking do this. Like, I think I might actually stay here. So, but then after the last, I give that speech and then I had decided that I needed to leave this town for a little bit to think on my own. Cause the thing is the whole time I was there, I was never left alone. Like only in my bedroom. 
but I had like chauffeurs everywhere. Like I had a chaperone at all times to the point where I almost couldn't think straight. Like I wasn't like, like, first of all, I have a shit ton of like diary and stomach problems because I just got to India. They're feeding me a fuck ton, like literally force feeding me with their, their hands and shit. And I'm not sleeping that, that much. Like these uh like muslim people know how to fucking party like without alcohol and stuff like they just kind of just stay up and just like work their fucking ass off and just pray a ton so it's like it gets you into this kind of like state and um and i was like i need to go be alone and like consider what's going on right now and it was right when it was about to be ramadan so they were like we want you to stay at least one more month for for ramadan and i was like it was kind of if i did that it was like game over you know of course i was gonna like stay for the rest of my life after one month of ramadan but so so i was like nah i gotta leave i had this beautiful moment with them with the family one last night like reading the quran his like brother gave me these beads and he said like if you don't, even if you don't come back or while you're thinking about this, I want you to take these beads and every day I want you to chant uh, Ya Hadi, Ya Hadi, Ya Hadi, and Ya Rahim, Ya Rahim, Ya Rahim. So what I does took that mean? The beads. I don't know. It's something, something, some type of prayer for, for like help from God. That sounds and, very uh, sweet. Yeah, it was cool, man. It's This is all. I love Islam. Islam is cool as fuck. But, uh, but yeah, I, uh, so I just dipped out. Well, the, the morning I told everybody I was going to leave. And then the morning I was going to leave, I wake up and it's the first morning I can't find fucking anybody to give me the ride to the, the train station, even though that's what we all talked about me doing the day before. Like suddenly everyone's gone. And I was like, all right, fuck this put on my backpack, packed my shit, and I walked myself to the train station. And then this man, my uh, protector, my my patron. The guy like, from the guy from the very beginning. Yeah, the guy who loves me. <laughs> and he uh, he just was like text me like what you've done is very bad. Like he was pissed and he's like, "Dude, I just told you I was going to do this, but I bet he got it made him real mad." And he was like, he was mad. I mean, I, he probably would have like accepted me back if I changed my mind, but he was, he was really heartbroken about it. You know, I think they all kind of were because in their eyes, like for me to not become a Muslim is like, is like cursing myself to hell, you know? So like, and, and this guy, like, it sounds all like ulterior motives, but I think this man actually was like really cared about me and was really trying to help me. So it was like, it was sad for them because it was like, damn, all right, man. Like, you're kind of fucked though, <laughs> you know? He, he told me before I left, you know, he's like, you know all this peace you're feeling, all this love, um, you know, it's gonna be gone when you leave here. And I mean, he was sort of right because it was this home, it was this base, but the thing is, is that I wasn't allowed to have an identity there. Like, I am I never tested this, but I'm like bisexual. Like, what would these people think if I told them I was bisexual? Or mm. what if, you know, like, or just what if these people knew who I really am? And, and if they wouldn't, they probably wouldn't even have responded any type of way except for just shut up, don't talk about that and like fall in line and it was like that big break when i was 24 i had to hit this big moment where i was sick of that you know like i had to say fuck everything to be free so it's like i'm not gonna just like lock myself down again right as i begin exploring <laughs> so then i just went and continued traveling in india and went and did a bunch of other really weird shit <laughs> huh so this is fascinating because, and you know, I you said at the beginning that we're kindred spirits, and I I know exactly what you're talking about when you're like I am on the hunt for um, 
uh, you know, experiences and things that are, uh, you know, out of out of my ordinary. I um, yeah, I identify with you on that. And it's funny to me because, like, I'm sure people listening to this, um, probably ha- probably, and you you said it yourself. You're like, I know it sounds ulterior motivey. And I'm sure people yeah. listening to this have all kinds of theories and and reactions to the things that you're talking about, and and these ideas of how there might be some ulterior motive going going on in there because it's just so it's just so strange. Like, why is this guy in a in a in a tourist hostel five hours away from? Where he yeah. lives and asks you to give it's just so many like that's the plan. <laughs> yeah. So many questions that just be. don't it have answers be. to them. And yeah. you were there, yeah. you lived it, and yet you still look at it and you even after having had some time to to look at this from outside, you still think to yourself, you know, I don't think there was an ulterior motive i genuinely believe that this guy felt as though or it could be both be, it could be uh, both felt, it could time. be a combination of both but you you saying you genuinely felt as though this guy uh f- wanted you to have a better life just because that's the kind of guy he is and just, because, just because that's the kind of not just you know because he wanted okay. me to have a better life, and he wanted to flex that he got this uh, white kid to become a Muslim, and he wanted me to be like his token in business, and I think he had a little bit of a gay crush on me. But in addition— You think—hold on. That, you, 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 you just brought that up. <laughs> you think he had a gay crush on you? <laughs> just vaguely. Just vaguely. Oh fuck! I shouldn't even say that, man. I'm gonna like dox this guy. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I I I gar- look. Uh, even the most sophisticated fucking private agent, I don't think, could determine where this guy is from based on this story. Although I don't know, I, that, this town sounds kind of small. What's the name okay, of it again? Well, just... Let's forget about that. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> the city. You mean? <laughs> yeah, the city. Let me ask you something. So, if uh, let me ask you a question, if he came on to you, how would you have reacted? I don't know. He's pretty gross. <laughs> he's like this stout, like he had this like gnarled face and like talked in this like really loud, like raspy voice. I can't and, tell how you uh, feel about, you know, I can't tell how you feel about this guy because on one hand you talk about him like you're with, with like uh, suspicion, but you also talk about him with like love and genuineness. Because both are true, man. That's been, that's like, uh, that's my experience of everything, man. Like it's, I feel like everything is true. <laughs> Do you have uh, have you texted? Has this guy texted you since? How long? How long ago was this? First of all, this was this was like four years ago, I'm like twenty eight. No. Uh, has he texted you since? No, because that was like my Indian phone, and he got it for oh. me. <laughs> Oh, okay. So you don't, you don't even have any way of getting like if you if you woke if you I could go in back the pa- to let, let me ask you a question. In the past four years, in the past four years, have you ever woken up in the middle of the night and been like, I should have taken the offer for the three wives and the and and no. hanging out and the Bentley and all no. that? No. No, but you know, I do. I do consider getting back into Islam because I kind of want to go do Hajj and go to Mecca. Because that just sounds insane. Like, just like, people have no idea how trippy Islam is. Like, I've done all that shit. And like, it's one of the, you know, it's as trippy as taking DMT or something. And it's very deep, you know. All these like all these dogmatic religions have a very mystical and true aspect to them, you know. And just like going to Mecca would be insane, but I think I would need to practice a lot because you can't go there unless you're a Muslim, you know. So I'd need to be a real Muslim. <laughs> so and I so I think about it, man. I think about becoming a Muslim again, but it's weird because it's like I don't know how people would feel about me even. 
you know, I don't think that's really kosher even for a guy like me, like that one foot, one out, one foot in, one foot out, like with many religions. Mm. And that's what kind of annoys me about many religions is like this, uh, this lack of like nuance in the thinking and like this, all these rules. And it's like, like it's, it's, it's kind of sad to me that Islam is so dogmatic because it's so rich and it's so full. Can you? Of I I'm. I feel like I'm. I feel like I have a thirty percent understanding of what that word means. You keep using it. What dogmatic? What, do you mean? what is dog? Yes. Like you know, just by the book, you know, by sure. the rules. Like look, yeah. like you know, and like and like shame, 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 and you fucked up, and you know, like I walked into I walked into a mosque with like a tear in my pants, and that's like a massive faux pas. Not that that's even, you know, but just I wish, I wish like some of the goodness of some of these like great religious traditions could be like shared with more. I mean, Christianity too. You're trying to, like, you, you're, you're trying to, you're trying to a la carte the religions. Exactly. Yeah. Which, you know. I don't think there's anything wrong. I mean, I mean, look, here's, in the grand scheme of things, you, you could make a religion called uh, Williamism. And you could go yeah, ahead and a la carte the religions, William's and that way. could just be what you believe. It'd be called William's Way. William's Way. Why did you go to jail last month? <laughs> oh, dude, I, I, uh, I, I. Was, you, have you heard of this app, Rando Nautica? No. What is that? It's like an app that like generates random GPS coordinates, and so like. <laughs> Basically, that sounds like a, you... that sounds like the start of how somebody went to jail for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you love it. You got to try it out. It's like right up your alley. Dude. You have to try it. <laughs> but uh, so I don't know if you've ever gotten to like chaos magic or anything like that. But the idea is if you know William Burroughs and does it like if you create randomness, if you do things that create randomness, it invokes like synchronicity. And like magic, like if you if you do the, you know the I don't know if you've heard of the cut up technique, but you if you cut a newspaper up and separate all the words and then like jumble them together, it's like that it will try it will speak to you, you know. So it's like uh, the GPS coordinates when you when you do something random, when you break out of the matrix by doing something you normally wouldn't do, weird shit will happen. Like, test it. Like, to everybody out there, I dare you to go try to think of something you would never do and do it and see if some weird-ass shit doesn't happen. I promise you it will. You know? And so um, we're going around doing this randonautica thing, and, you know, we found some abandoned boats at some point, and then me and my friend Juan, and then we, we went to this, like, uh, waste processing plant, and we, like acted like we worked there like i was like pretending to talk on the phone and like we got in and and then we were done we had this big adventure exploring brooklyn and then at the very end of the night um we um we went to our last stop and we hopped a hopped the fence into a construction uh whatever construction site and we got fucking arrested, dude. Those things are posted up, and we got arrested hard, and it was so scary. It sucks getting arrested, <laughs> dude, especially I, in New York. <laughs> I like I like that you're like, you know, man, if you go out of your way, crazy things will happen, like getting arrested for trespassing. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But... <laughs> But that, but we were looking for adventure, man, and we found it. No, no, no. I look, man. I, I'm look. I, I, I like you, man. I like the way you think. All right. This is um, uh, uh. You're, you're, you're out there to live. Uh, you know, all the days of your life. I respect that. I mean, there's a lot of off days, but I'll get pumped again. I'll get the bravery back. What do you do it's for like, a? Do you have a job or a girlfriend now? Like, yeah, what, man. Do you have, I, do you have elements to your life that are stable? I, I, I assist a. That's like one thing I made. I've been making art for like years. I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be like a, a big painter in New York City, and I'm really on and off about that goal because it's like, fuck. I just want to go do random shit. 
but there's like this gravity that keeps pulling me back to painting. So if anybody in New York or Brooklyn knows a place, like has a space where I can do an art show, I've got a bunch of badass paintings and I'm going to make a whole bunch more. So please reach out to me. If you got a spot, I can do a show. You're like, you're like David Cho. I do. Dude, dude, David Cho made a huge impact. That's what started me on a lot of this shit, bro. I watched Thumbs Up when I was yeah. like, I watched that one movie where he gets like lost in Alaska. You know what I'm talking about? Um, now, this isn't no, David Cho. I know what I know what Thumbs Up is. Yeah. Yeah, but then, yeah, I watched uh, Thumbs Up right before I graduated high school, and I was like, damn, like, yeah, he's one of the gurus. For sure, man. He's one of the heroes, and you are too, what? man. I was just watching oh, thanks, you, man. like, I was just watching you, like, walk around uh, in Japan, and I was just like, damn, mm. like, I gotta get back out there. I gotta shake some shit up. Yeah, you know, fuck, man. I, I, I um, that's that's cool that you you liked the uh, Japan stuff. I still need to like put, uh, edit that and put it on YouTube, but. Yeah, I loved I love doing that kind of shit of just I mean that's what's cool about the gecko costume is like I can go out anywhere and just people will start talking to me and you know that that yeah. leads you to all kinds of um all kinds of adventures and whatnot. Yeah, well, man. okay, what's your do you if you if you want do you want to plug yourself? Do you have an art thing? Yeah, you can, go, you can dox yourself. I've, I've you got want. like an art IG. It's not really I'm better I'm better than it shows. <laughs> But, um, like, I ha- I'm not very, like, I have never really, like, uh, given a lot of time to my marketing or whatever. But, yeah, I'll plug my thing. And somebody fucking give me a room I can show some art in. A big white box. You can, ju- why, uh, look, man, you know there's Google and Craigslist and shit, right? This is the worst possible avenue for you to be asking. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. I Go I'm ahead, what's, your, fucking- what's your Instagram? <laughs> Uh, William Way, one two three four. William Way, one two three four. All right, man. I'll check you out. I'm gonna go on it right now, and I'm gonna post a picture of uh, me at the giving the inspirational speech. You have the you have the photo of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not of it, like me and you're front fucking of the crazy, stage, man. Like in my seat. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Before we go, what's your what? What's next for you? What's your Wait, you told you had you told me that you had a job, and I fucking forgot what you said it was. I assist a painter. I assist one of my heroes. Oh, you assist I'm a like painter. His, his art assistant. Okay, nice. What's next for you? What's your big? What's what's next in your life, William? Well, there's a there's a little fork. Like I'm I'm trying to. I'm like, I'm like um, either gonna go to art school in Germany. Uh, there's a school called like Stadel School I'm trying to get into, or, or if that if I don't get in, I think I'll just like go like travel. Like I I'm like you know about to be fucking thirty, so it's like uh, I want to spend like if I'm not in art school, you know, scissoring the seas, then I'm going to um, just like go like travel aimlessly for. Another year, probably. That's cool. Somewhere, man. Africa. Man, it's so or... funny. I'm like, uh, I'm only, I'm only 25, and I'm like, uh, feeling like, oh, am I getting too old to? Because I did a lot yeah. of like, you know, I, I, this, this, you know, this kick that you're talking about of like, I want to just go to a foreign country and like see yeah. what the fuck is going on and like what maybe i'll go talk go try to talk to this person that i would normally talk to and see where that leads me i was i was really on that kick um when i was like 20 um and that, and I, I was really on that kick a lot you know the gecko got me back on that kick because the gecko makes doing that stuff uh you know a lot a lot easier because again you know when i wear a costume cool. people want to talk to me and i also have an excuse to do it because i can film them. it and put it up there you know yeah. Um, it's great when you confuse the two. That's like what I've had a hard time finding is like, I love making art and I'm like annoyingly like, I don't know, like as much as I want to travel, I'm always like forcing myself. There's this weird part of my like other brain that like forces me to like sit down and like do projects and try to like accomplish things. And it's like right. somehow I need to learn to 
I'm trying to figure out how to respect both of those forces in my life because they're both seem <laughs> yeah. they both seem necessary. Yeah, me too, man. No, me too. I'm all, I'm I'm like, you know, I mean, I I'm sitting here in this studio talking to you which is uh located in a place like we said. Um Yeah. And it's like I could I fucking could like go to I don't know, uh 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 Iceland and try to you know stream from there and do my stuff. I mean, that's what yeah. I that's what I really want to do, man. I um yeah, yeah, I, I I love doing that kind of stuff. That, that that's gonna be kind of my. I think I think I want that to be my focus for next year is making more of those kinds of videos. Because you're right, man. There is this like uh, one of the big uh, kind of back and forths, you know, in my head has been the the desire to sit my ass down and create some sort of foundation for my existence, and then the desire to do the opposite and just you know screw off to somewhere and bop around. But um, yeah, you know, I mean, also, you know, especially considering that how how imminent our deaths are. Um, yeah, it's cool, man. It's also, oh, by the way, it's also horrifically depressing sometimes. You know, sometimes you're yeah. just alone. So, like you were saying, dude, it's uh, you know, sometimes you're just alone. In um, I remember I was like I went I was alone in uh, Paris, just really fucking sad on a bench. Near the yeah, it can be really depressing. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, "What the fuck am I doing right now?" But also, there's some, yeah. there's, I, there's like, there's life in that, you know. So, yeah, absolutely. It's like, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like I've been trying to like take my focus from like to the present to the present moment, like just trying to get more because. Because ultimately, all that shit, like, I've done, like, all, like a shit ton of adventures and, like, had lots of, like, pleasure and even, like, accomplished some cool things I really wanted to do with art and stuff. And it's, like, it's never, it's, it's so fleeting. Like, you can go to, you could go to fucking wherever for two years and have the time of your life. And then the thing is, it's, like, over, you know? So it's, it's true. and then you're back you're back where you started and that like true. that never stops like you'll always find yourself back in the room just with yourself and it's true so i'm just trying to be and and i've spent so i've wasted a lot of energy and time just like wanting to be somewhere else and that yeah. that that feeling will chase you everywhere you go and there's nothing yeah. like you have to address it head on um it's true. Well, that's what I feel like is when you're talking about trying to combine the two, like, you know, can I uh, build something or be or can I can I be creating something while I'm on these adventures, you know, that'll make it seem like I've I've progressed my life in some way, shape or form. But also, I, you know, I, you know, look, you say you're back where you started, but uh, I mean, you you have progressed your life in some way, shape, or form. You put yourself out there. You know a little bit more about the uh, world around you. Um, yeah. You've met Yeah, it's more not like people. it's a waste of time. No, yeah. it's not a waste of time at all. I think it's a great use of time. Um, For sure. But also to the, to the point of trying to be present, I was um, – I, I think I have said this on the podcast before, so whatever. But I was on a walk with my mom the other day and my dog, and it was like a sunny day outside – and I was just like in my hometown and um, I remember just thinking to myself like, you know, it was it was it was pretty much the complete opposite of like a cr some crazy adventure in a place I've never been to. It was the opposite of that. But it was it yeah. was so beautiful. And I was like, oh, if this Hell is yeah. the best that life gets, this is pretty goddamn good. I could spend I could spend a whole lifetime, you know, uh, trying yeah, to 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 be, uh, you know, grateful for just this. Instead of always yeah, trying to be like, what's the next uh, uh, crazy thing I can go and do? So I, I also struggle with that big back and forth of should I yeah. be happy where I am or should I go try and uh, go to fucking Mars? Well, the funny thing is, it's like you might as well, like while you're not on the trip, like ex start exercising that muscle of just like, because like a lot of the best fucking moments in life are literally just like, 
like being on the bus, like listening to reggae, staring out the window, and you feel really good for no no reason, you know. And it's like that's a lot of the best moments. They don't like require like a whole bunch have, of like. <laughs> do you have Do you have dreadlocks? I'm imagining you with dreadlocks now. No, not at all, dude. Okay. <laughs> What's your name again, William? William, super nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you Hopefully too, we William. Can hang Thanks out at for. Some point. I'll try to like go to a live show and meet you. I'm coming to Brooklyn. I'm coming to I'm coming yeah. to the Bell House. But in that shit's gonna sell out so quick, and I'm like so bad at getting in time. <laughs> Does the fuck the tickets are available now? Anyway, whatever. I'm not gonna make this <laughs> okay, thing okay. about my tour. Okay, uh, William. It was good talking to you, man. I hope you uh, figure out your stuff. Uh, I'll check out. What was it, William? One two three William four. William Way. One two three four. William Somebody Way, give one, two, me three, four. a box to show my art in, please. Okay. All right. Good talking to you, Will. Uh, good right. luck and um, fucking praise Allah. Is that what they say? Oh yeah, praise Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Rock and roll. All right, man. You take care. Hi, right, peace. I like that guy. He was cool. Um, made me think about stuff. Made me think about wanting to um, go out into the universe. I like, you know, I don't know, the way he was talking about that family and that whole experience he had with that guy where he felt as though that guy's intentions were genuine in a sense, even though the circumstances surrounding it were, you know, definitely bizarre. Um, I don't know. I don't. Th- I don't think any of us will know, unless if somebody listening to this is like, uh, is is lives in that city that he mentioned, and he was like, "This is a thing here." So I don't know, but thanks for sharing, William. Hello. Hey. Yo, what's up, man? How you doing, dude? What's going on? So there's a lot of shit going on, man. I just got a brand new job, right? Cool. And I fucked up my first day. How so? So I decided to say, hey, fuck it. I'm going to smoke on my first date, which was kind of fucked. <laughs> okay. What do you do? What do you do? So I, so I, so I decided to smoke a bowl before, you know, I went to work. What do you, what do you do for work? Oh, I, I used to work at Wendy's. Now I got fired from there. So. All right. So you decided, so you got a job at Wendy's and your very first day at Wendy's, you decided to smoke a bowl. Before work. Yeah. Yeah. All right, continue. How did that work out for you? So my boss, he knows when people are high. So whenever I got there, all he saw was my eyes fucking bloodshot red and I was fucked. I was like, oh shit. Like I knew from the day I got on there, fired. Do your eyes usually get bloodshot red when you get high? Yeah. So you have to understand, if you're the manager at Wendy's, you have seen your fair share of very high people. And so clearly he would know what you would look like if you were high. And that's where I yeah. think you made your, your, your most quintessential mistake. Yeah. I didn't know until I got there that he knew people were high. Yeah. I mean, everybody that he, at least 75% of the people he interacts with on a daily basis are extremely high. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so he just knew, did you, did you deny it at all? Did you just say that? Like, I mean, it's allergy season. You had a pretty good excuse there. I did say, yeah, I had allergies. He's like, don't fuck me, man. I'm like, shit. So he, so it sounds as though you resigned to this fairly quickly, like without a fight. Like you tried the allergy thing, and then immediately you're just like, "Nah, you're right. I'm, I'm high." Yeah, because he knew, he knew I didn't have allergies. Was okay. Like, Fuck. Um, I have a few questions. Uh, you know, I'm also, I am also guilty of getting high. And then immediately being like, I should not have gotten high just now. I don't get high before I do this. I've said that a bunch of times. But um, I will, like, get high before going to hang out with someone or before going into some kind of setting where I'm like, I don't know. Why did I get high before this? Um, what why did what inspired you to get high before going into your uh, first day? 
I just had a rough fucking day. Like, fucking shit was going down. Okay, wait, what was going down? Fucking, like, my grandpa, the other day, just fucking flat out fucking just killed to the fucking floor. He, he, what happened? <laughs> my grandpa fucking died the other day. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, like, man. Yeah, and I was just like, fucking not having this. I was like, fuck, I'm just smoke a bowl. Okay. And I walked into work and that shit happened. So now I'm out of a job, but I'm fucking high. So Are you high right now? Yeah. All right. I kind of figured that. Do you get a, how often do you get high? Yeah. Thank you, man. What? Who? Who are you talking to? Uh, no, I'm just talking to you. Fucking, you said. You said yeah. thank. I asked you. Okay, um, I, I, you know, I feel like, excuse me, you didn't answer my question, but you kind of did, because I asked you, how often do you get high, and you said, thank you, man, which, in a way, is an answer to my question. So, uh, I get high, like, most of my time, like, like, three times out of the fucking week. Okay, why do, do you, are you, do you feel like you're trying to escape from reality? Yeah, that's mostly the big thing. I feel that. I do the same fucking thing, dude. I'm a guy get high like every day. I'm trying to stop doing that. Um, yeah, yeah getting high is a. Are you talking to somebody else? You're confusing me right now. No, I'm trying to talk to you, but you go ahead first. Um, I, um, I, I, yeah, I get high all the time to escape reality myself. Uh, so I understand, I understand where that impulse comes from. What are you trying to yeah. escape about reality? Just the fucking stress, dude. Because I originally just stopped smoking, a, like, nicotine shit. So. Yeah. I was like, you know, I'm going to get off of that and, like, you know, smoke a little bit more. Yeah. Hmm. This is tough. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm trying to do the exact same thing right now. Uh, uh-huh. Hmm. What does anything? What else relieves? What, what else relieves your stress besides just pot? Basically, just going fishing. Like you know, when I used to go fishing with my dad a lot, so go I fishing. used to get nerves. Yeah. Okay. You know what the problem is? Is I bet getting high and going fishing is awesome. Too <laughs> fucking late, dude. I have no idea what you just said, but um, I don't know. I think I think. To start, to start, right? I'm not going to tell you you shouldn't get high all the time because I get high all the time. But you, I think the first step would at least be to establish certain situations where you're like, okay, this is off limits for getting high. This, I have done the research. I have, and, and I can say with, with strong anecdotal evidence that going into my job at Wendy's High is not a good idea. I have I I've done I have done the research. I and I could say with strong anecdotal evidence that showing up to record this this show and getting high is a bad idea. So I don't do that. That's a that's a boundary that I have set. But and there's other boundaries that I should set. Like I shouldn't fucking need to get high before doing any uh uh like going to the grocery store, right? That's a boundary I should set. I haven't set that boundary yet, but I'm working on it, but I have I I at least have a firm boundary in place of I'm not gonna get high before I do at least this. Do you have a thing? Yeah. Do you have like uh, like is there a thing that you think you could set that boundary for? Of like okay, if I get another job, I'm gonna, let me at least I'll let me I'll, once the shift is over, I'm stealing a bunch of French fries and getting high as I can and sitting in the parking lot for three hours. Do that, but don't get high while you're on the job. Like what's what boundaries can you set? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you, man. What's your next move, sir? So, my next move is to just, like, you know, not smoke before I go to work, but, like, smoke over the weekend. So, like, Wednesday and Saturday. Wait, no, no. We- okay. Saturday and Sunday. I smoke on those two days. Okay. Yeah, give, like give, give it a try. Give yeah. it a try. Thank you, man. Yeah, for sure. Uh, good luck. Uh, it's hard. If you find yeah. if you if you have any secrets that you discover on your journey, let me know. I'd love to 
make use of them myself. All right, man. All right, man. All right, man. You take care. You Enjoy. Um, I don't know. What are you going to do after this? I'm curious. Probably just going to go out on the truck. I have no idea what you just said, but that sounds fun. You have a good night, man. Take care. <laughs> yeah, you too. That guy sounds like he was about to overdose on weed.